Hi guys, it's Debbie. Today I'm sharing a card that I made using the new Kaleidoscope Argyle Slimline die set from Spellbinders. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Debbie and I love making and sharing lots of crafty things because if I can make it, you can too. So the die set that I'm playing with today is the Slimline Argyle um, die set. This is brand new in the July 2021 new release from Spellbinders and it's got basically all the things that you need to make a, a real cool little argyle pattern you know like if it was on socks or something like that and it's perfect size to use for a slimline card hence the name so i cut out a bunch of the diamond shapes this is uh, there are three layering dies so i bunched i <laughs> I cut this out of different colors of blue cardstock, just some things that I had in my scrap bin. And now I'm just layering up a couple of those. I'm going to go ahead and just glue those together. And then I can decide exactly how I'm going to place them on my card. And here you can see three of the main pieces and how those look. There is this other piece that I believe goes underneath, but I chose not to use that one. It covers up a little bit too much. And... I wanted to be able to see all that dimension there. So I'm just going to layer up, glue up three of those, and then we'll move on to the next part of my card. So I think this would look really cool as a slim line, but I decided I wanted to do it on a regular A2. So I'm using this other piece of that argyle pattern, the part that makes the basically the cross spaces. Um, I'm using that to help me line up and make sure that my little um, diamond shapes are positioned right. And I'm gonna put this on some silver glitter cardstock. I just thought that that would be so pretty behind those little blue diamonds. Kind of a snowy kind of thing. Anyway, I'm lining everything up and then I'm going to put my three diamonds in place um, basically lined up with those diamond shapes on that second die. With those in place, I'm going to put an acrylic block over them and give them a little bit of time to dry. Then I'll use my paper trimmer to trim off the excess that I've got hanging off of that card panel. Next, I'm going to adhere that panel down to a top folding, I think it's top folding, might be side folding, a blue card base. I'm just using my dot liner adhesive for this. I'm also trying something a little different than what I normally do. This is that piece of plastic I'm holding, that L. That is actually one of the Creative Corners pieces. I think it's from Creative Corners. I'll leave a link down below for you um, if I can find that to try to give that just a little touch of an edge and try to keep this actually straight. It worked great on this card, but the bottom of the card was actually a little bit long. I cut these card bases two years ago and had not used them, so I'm trimming it down. I evidently cut it the wrong size initially. For the sentiment, I'm using another of the dies, die sets from that Christmas in July new releases. This is from the Tis the Season collection, and it's a create, create a Christmas sentiment etch dies. It's got a, a lot of um, little um, Christmas words, and several of those, and you can create a bunch of different sentiments with that. So I basically, I cut out two or three layers, finishing off with that dark blue cardstock. It's gonna be the top piece, and I did a few layers because I wanted it to kind of pop on my card. So I'm wanting these words to be straight. Um, also, these guys kind of separate some of the letters, so they don't line up exactly. Uh, and I wanna keep them as straight as I can, so I am trying and using some neg some of the negative space from one of the pieces that I die cut to line up all of my letters. I'm going to just put the die cuts back into the, the holes there. And then I'm going to use a piece of washi tape over the top and hopefully, hopefully, hold everything together. So 
So next I'm going to put some art glitter glue using that fine tip nozzle on the back of these very, very thin little lines for the um, happy holidays sentiment that I'm going to be adding to my card. And then let's see if my little idea actually works. I'm also taking that piece back out from the creative corner so I can see if I can get this lined up. Um, it's a little hard to do this though because the I'm not able to actually line up the top of the lowercase letters with it very well. So I had to kind of mess around with that a little bit. So let's see if that worked. Well, other than the glue not being completely adhered, I think it turned out pretty good. So I'm going to put that under my acrylic block so that it can dry a little bit more while I go ahead and add some art glitter glue to the holidays portion of my sentiment. So now that both of those sentiment words are down, I'm going to go ahead and set that aside to dry. So next, you know me, I'm going to be adding a few little gems to the front of this card. Actually, I lied. I added a lot of... <laughs> Well, not a lot, but more than just a few little gems on the card. I decided to decorate those little diamond shapes as well on there. So next I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the inside of the card. So I'm using another one of the new release items. This is the Home for Christmas Sentiment Stamps. And I'm going to use one of the stamps from that set to go on the inside. It says family and friends are true gifts of Christmas. So I'm lining that up on this basically in place on a an extra A2 size panel. And then I'm going to condition that stamp because it's brand new using my Versamark ink before stamping it back down in t Memento Tuxedo Black. So I trimmed that panel down, I believe it was down to three and three quarters by five. And now I'm adding a little bit of, of silver. This is actually a couple of pieces of that front panel that I had trimmed off earlier so that it would be a little smaller on the front of my card. And I'm just adding that little touch to this card panel on the inside along the top and the bottom. This paper actually kind of feels like washi tape, so you can definitely use washi tape instead for this. And then I'm going to trim those pieces off and adhere it on the inside of my card. One trick I have been doing a lot lately since I've been adding a panel on the inside of a lot of my cards right now, I line everything up on the opposite side, so on the back of the front, and then I just close the card base and everything lines up perfectly. So that finishes up this card project for today. Thank you so much for dropping by. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss any of my videos. Really appreciate you being here today. And remember, if I can make it, you can too. Have a wonderful day.